Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. It's getting dark on me, as you notice. Um, I don't want to, I've got the earphones in, so I don't want to go and turn the light on. You don't really need to see me. I'm continuing on my uh, discussions on climate disruption. Some of the latest and, and most um, concerning um, things that have happened in the last, um, you know, in, in 2019, basically, in the last few weeks. So the Berkeley Earth data set um, came out and I showed you in some previous videos the temperature plot. Um, I talked about baselines and I also showed a graphic uh, from Berkeley Earth showing the temperature changes in countries across the planet. Now in this case here, I'm going to show you, this is another depiction of, so it shows you, there's a map of the planet, and it gives you the spatial indication. This is the, so this is a 12 month moving average. It's anomalies, temperature anomalies relative to the 1951 to 1980 mean. So we've got a graph here. Okay, so this will be the 1951 to 1980 mean at zero. So the graph is showing you the anomalies, um, and this is in degrees Celsius, and it also shows you more detail here. You can see the sliding scale, the different colors. So what you can see is, this is a very good depiction to see, you know, you can look at your particular part of the planet and see, you know, what your region has been done. So this is just another way of displaying the data. And what you can see here, um, you can see, you know, when it's very warm in the ocean here, you have El Nino years. When it's blues here, you have La Nina years. Um, so there's a lot of transfer of heat from the oceans to the atmosphere. Now it's slowing down. Look at the reds up there. Look at the uh, huge warming, huge accelerated Arctic amplification warming. And you'll also notice um, that there's a, there's a warming hole, if you like, in this region, just south of Greenland. This is extremely concerning because people originally thought it could be cold water coming down, uh, meltwater coming down, but what is probably the case is that the, the uh, Gulf Stream, which comes up here and crosses, okay, if it's not, it used to come up here much further and come up over here, and it looks like it's going, it's coming across below so if it's not going up there where it used to go and it's coming lower, then there'll be a cold hole here. And um, in Paris, um, I was talking to Jason Box about this and he said, hmm, I haven't thought of that. I wonder if anybody's studied that. And, you know, I think people are starting to, but um, there's also a, uh, you know, it looks like here, you know, because it's blue here, maybe a, a weak uh, La Nina, we're supposed to get and El Nino, um, late last year, there was a 70% chance that we'd get one uh, this year. I have to check those figures and see. Um, but you'll see, so this is the main feature here, and there's another one here over Europe. Okay, so the, I mean, I, I love this depiction. So I'm just gonna play it again, and, and we can look at some things here. So, you know, if you look at, you know, a specific, you can play this over and over and look at a specific region. So right here, I'm looking down here. So look at the anomalies here. Um, you know, there's sometimes it's colder, sometimes it's a lot warmer. Um, but it varies and it, you know, in the last number of years, it's become consistently cooler. Um, Okay, and you can also compare the anomalies on land to anomalies on the sea. Of course, the water, it, it takes a lot of energy to change, to heat up water. And a lot more, you know, the density of water is about a thousand times that of air. So the heat capacitor, the ability of water to store heat is enormous. Um, so the anomalies that, that we'll see, we would expect to see much greater anomalies over land than we see over the oceans. You can see uh, Antarctica much warmer than normal. And you can see, you know, that there's a colder spot here. So when you have a, a U.S. politician throwing a snowball and, and saying, hey, where's global warming? You know, you can see that... Uh, 
there's just a little cooler cooling spot on on the planet there okay so neutral here you know colder here okay so this is a great uh, depiction and okay so this is uh, Carl Sagan let's have a look at what he posted I want I want to read this because this is so relevant to what's going on today I have this is he said in 1995 in the book uh, the demon haunted world science is a candle in the dark 1995 Basically, I have a foreboding of an America in my children's or grandchildren's time, when the United States is a service and information economy, when nearly all the key manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries, when awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few, and no one representing the public interest could even grasp the issues, when the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in authority, when clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what's good and what's true, we slide almost without noticing back into superstition and darkness. The dumbing down of America is most evident in the slow decay of substantive content in the enormously influential media, the 30 second sound bites, now down to 10 seconds or less, the lowest common denominator programming, credulous presentations on pseudoscience and superstition, but especially a certain kind of celebration of ignorance. So how, how does that sound? You know, 1995. So here we are, you know, 2019. Okay, here we are almost 25 years, uh, you know, <laughs> almost 25 years later. And, you know, you can see how, how prescient this is. You know, we've been getting really crazy fires. You know, the, the Paradise Fire that burnt, took out um, the town of Paradise, California. Wildfires in Europe, wildfires in Australia, wildfires all over on the rise. You know, we're getting these pyro... Um, the, the, the intense wildfires are spawning their own thunderstorm. Py, pyro uh, cumulus clouds, um, pyro... pyro um, tornadoes if you like okay um, now on the positive side here there seems to be more and more recognition by the public this is this is on Americans on the surge in fear about climate change so more Americans than ever are worried about climate change things are happening to their communities things are happening to their trees things are happening to their homes there's more and more disasters Okay, climate, and a surging number of Americans understand that climate change is happening, believe that it could harm their family and the country, according to a new poll from Yale and George Mason University. There's a couple climate groups at these two places that do excellent polling. However, Americans are not any more willing to pay money to fight climate change than they were three years ago. So, you know, although they're starting to get concerned, there, there's not this element of fear yet, because when there's an element of fear, things will tip and the public will be in the streets and demand massive, you know, d demand action on climate change. Um, so the data are striking, uh, large changes. Um, 57% of Americans say global warming will harm their neighbors. 56% say it will harm their family. 49% say it will harm them personally. Okay, but they're not yet willing to do enough, anything to fight it. So, you know, the pain needs to get more severe. And uh, so just wait a bit of time and the pain will get more severe. You know, we'll have this tipping point in human behavior. Um, this is going back to Australia. You know, it's so hot that bats are falling from the trees. Um, and this is um, basically an interesting article on aerosols. And I will discuss this because the, the phenomena of global dimming, okay, it's believed that if we were to stop all fossil fuel burning the air would clear up significantly within a week or so in the lower atmosphere. There'd be less particulates um, 
and those particulates block some sunlight and cause cooling. So the temperature would rise in that space of a week as these aerosols in the lower atmosphere were rained out within about the week. And how much would it rise? Okay, that's the big question. So, you know, generally most people, most scientists think it would be about half a degree, but there's a recent study that shows it might be higher than that. You know, maybe it's as high as, um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's as high as uh, a, a degree or even even more. So that so it says that the true level of global warming could be dramatically higher than we understand. We understand it's about a degree. It could be as high as two degrees. So that would show that the aerosol effect was one degree as opposed to the generally accepted zero point five degrees for scientists. And this deserves a whole video on its own. Now I talked about insects, you know, they're vital for crop pollination, plants, they can't survive. These insects that we cannot survive with it without have already vanished. And a number of different places the insects are vanishing. Um, you know, the coral reefs are vanishing. Getting back to the insects, the Puerto Rican rainforest, basically 98% of the insects on the forest floor of rainforest in Puerto Rico have vanished, disappeared in the last three, three and a half decades. When you talk about insects that are flying up in the canopy, about 80% have declined. These are the highest numbers on insect decline that I've seen, and these are happening in tropical, near tropical rainforests, and, you know, it's because, I believe it's because of heat spikes you know, hot spots. These insects have adapted to a fairly uniform, fairly constant temperature condition in the rainforest. Slightly higher temperatures takes them out of their range. They're very sensitive to temperature as opposed to insects at higher latitudes that see, you know, and have had to adapt to survive to larger temperature swings. So this is a huge issue, obviously. Um, climate change is a public health emergency. Of course, the Lancet Medical Journal had a whole massive report um, a few months ago on impact, human impacts of, you know, the effects of human on humans of climate change. So, disease vectors uh, increase. We know that um, it's not just effects on humans; it's effect on all animals. We get more ticks. We get um, the, the mosquitoes can go up to higher elevations, for example, and reach cities like Nairobi, for example, in Kenya, whereas, you know, they couldn't go up that high and reach them. So, they're, you know, and then they can carry their disease vectors and so on. Um, I'll end on a happy note here. The 20th happiest countries in the world in 2018 you know, you want to be in Scandinavia. So Finland, Norway, Denmark, Iceland. You know, look at these. These are in countries. This is, I find this a bit surprising because these countries are in the winter. They're subject to very, very little light. You know, they're very far up north. There's huge amounts of darkness. You know, we know that light is important for people's happiness. You know, there's something called seasonal affective disorder, SAD. Um, you know, lots of people in North America get, get these lights to, um, you know, they find that when the daylight hours reduce, um, then they start feeling, you know, the blues. So up in these countries, they have to overcome that even more so. And I would like to point out that in a lot of these countries, uh, the per capita number of chess players is higher. So I know in countries like Iceland, they have massively strong chess players. I mean, in Reykjavik, you know, not a very big city. I don't know, what is it, 30,000 people or something, if memory serves. Um, they have a chess club and they have like 20, 30 grandmasters that just, you know, live close to each other and walk and play chess. And this is like a cra crazy number of really, really strong chess players. Canada's on the list. The U.S. and the U.K. are way, way down. So anyway, um, ending on this happy note, um, you know, try to let people know about our climate.